Tonight's program is called Preservation Matters by Deborah Packard. This presentation will provide a brief analysis of why historic preservation matters. It will include an overview of Preservation Worcester's work in the city. There will be a discussion of programs and policies in Worcester that might be of benefit in Shrewsbury. Deborah has been the Executive Director of Preservation Worcester for 15 years. She's most proud of saving the following buildings from demolition. Stearns Tavern, Chestnut Street Congregational Church, the Central Building, Our Lady of Fatima Church, and the Kimball House. She also led the organization during the restoration of the street clock on Front Street and the reconstruction of the clock tower at Worcester State Hospital. She's a graduate of our very own Shrewsbury High School and Wheaton College, where she received a BA in Urban Studies. We're very <coughs> pleased to welcome Deborah Packard. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to be here today. And please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, it was, it's great to be in Shrewsbury with my friend Nancy and all of you, many familiar faces. I have actually had met a couple times in this building with Henry Wood. I grew up around the corner from him and uh, was hoping to see him tonight, so I, I feel your loss as well. As Chris said, I want to talk to you a little bit about why preservation is important to me. And um, probably it's things that you've already thought about, but sometimes um, it's nice to think, think it out through. Then we'll talk about what we do a little bit at Preservation Worcester. And then I put together what I call a preservation toolbox, some ideas of things that we do that you might be able to incorporate in Shrewsbury. <laughs> Um, we are a different place. We're a big city, the second largest city in New England, and you're a small town. But there might be some things we do that um, you might think about. Somebody told me Condi Ness just uh, recognized Union Station as one of the 10 most beautiful train stations in the co country. And at one, one point, there was a big movement um, in the 70s to demolish that building. Uh, yeah, it is, but it certainly is a landmark in, in Worcester. I spoke to, I was speaking to my brother Stephen on the phone yesterday, and I told him I was coming here to speak, and he said, well, what about the Artemis Ward House? Is it still there? And I said, yes, it's taken care of uh, very well. But our buildings tell us, keep our history and culture, and a lot of times I think when you lose your building, you also lose the history and culture that goes along with it. They make great places to live. Um, I live in an old house in Worcester. Um, these are pictures of Worcester houses that the three deckers that you're probably familiar with that are such a part of Worcester. And they also can make great places to work. These are all buildings that have been uh, repurposed in our businesses. One of the big things, and sometimes people don't recognize it, is uh, the economic value of um, historic preservation. I don't know if you've been to the Birch Tree Bread Company and Crompton Collective, but that building on the top left now is a has a lot of thriving businesses in it. Um, the top right is was the old Buick station on Shrewsbury Street, which is now a restaurant. Um, the Hanover Theater really was part of the impetus for the uh, redevelopment of downtown Worcester and brings in millions of dollars uh, a year to the city. And then uh, the Bull Mansion is on the bottom left. But I was at a Chamber of Commerce event recently and they had some speakers talking about Worcester and they were all new to the city and people were asking them, well, why did you pick that location? And um, two, of the, two of the speakers were actually the owner of the Buick and then the, um, someone from Crompton Collective. And they said if they had 
put this, their businesses in a, in a different place, and Troy Siebel's from the Hanover concurred, it, it wouldn't have the same impact. Going to a brand new theater is not like go, walking into the Hanover Theater. Going shopping at Crompton Collective in that cool little building is a little different than going to the Greendale Mall. It's also, our buildings are, um, give our places a unique identity and a sense of community pride. And when I put this slide up, I was thinking when I was in college, my, one of my professors said to me, oh, that Shrewsbury Common is so beautiful. And I, I don't know, I was used to it, but I mean, this is a beautiful place that you have. And there's no other place in the world that has a common that looks like this. Buildings also have intrinsic value. These are um, actually pictures uh, from the demolition of, uh, of Notre Dame de Canadian Church in downtown Worcester. And buildings, especially pre-World uh, War II buildings, the materials were better. The craftsmanship was more sophisticated. Um, they were built to different standards. Our buildings just don't, don't have what these older buildings had. <clears throat> There's also a lot of talk now about how historic preservation is green because when you think of all the materials that are wasted when you tear a building down and then you have to truck them out to a land dump and then you have to bring in new materials, uh, it really has an impact on the environment. And once a building is gone, it's gone forever. And I tried to pull out some Shrewsbury pictures for you. But, you know, 10 years to front, down the road, you can't get spags back. You can't get the mansion back. Um, they're destroyed and they are gone. And then over time, they're gone from people's consciences as well. So. Preservation Worcester is uh, celebrating its 50th year this year. We were formed in 1969 in, in response to urban renewal when buildings were coming down across the city. And uh, our mission is to protect our historic structures for future generations. But we also have a component of excellence in new design, and we would like the buildings that we build um, to be of the character and something we can be proud of uh, to hand down to future generations. And I really think that we fall pretty short in, in that aspect. This is where we're located. We're located at on 10 Cedar Street. Uh, this building was donated to us by a woman who had grown up in this house. It's, we actually are surrounded by parking lots and she didn't want to see her house turned into a, another parking lot, so she donated it to us. And it works out great for us because we can rent space in it. We have parking lot across the street uh, that we rent as well. And what we do, we have um, a great education program. Uh, I do have some flyers up here which uh, have some of our, our upcoming programs, so if you want to come and see our, hear our programs, that would be great. Um, we're, we're all about preserving neighborhoods. Neighborhoods are really important, especially in a city as large as Worcester. Uh, we're an advocacy organization. Um, we like to promote community pride and economic development. And as I said, we're also interested in urban design. We have programs for school children and then also for adults. And we reach about 10,000 people a year through our programs. <clears throat> These are just some shots of some of our advocacy work, um, meeting with people, um, going in old buildings. And what I, what's important to us and one of our mottos is save the best to last. We're not trying to save every building. Um, that would be impossible and not realistic. But we try and identify the most important structures and then try to save them. And we're saving them 
from neglect. Um, this was a, a carriage house that eventually was demolished. Uh, John Singer Sargent painted portraits in it. It was, it was a significant place, but water and infiltration are, are horrible on an old building and people just didn't take care of it. They kept promising they would, they never did, and eventually it needed to be demolished. Of course, demolition is another one that we try and prevent. This is another picture of uh, Notre Dame des Canadiens in downtown Worcester that was demolished recently. Uh, this is a building on Green Street, uh, also inappropriate alteration. It's, it's owned by the ancient order of the Hibernians. We know that the original windows are still in place and siding. They're trying to raise some the money to take that off. Um, and then also type of use. Uh, this building has been demolished as well, but it's my best example. This is the old Paris cinema that was in downtown Worcester that uh, showed pornographic films. <laughs> We also, as I said, we have an, uh, an urban design part of our mission. We call our committee Urban Action. And I thought you'd be interested to hear because this year what we've decided to study are the waterways in Worcester. Um, and one of our particular interests is Lake Quinsigamond and developing more green space along Lake Quinsigamond. Um, so the people, that's a beautiful lake, and there isn't a lot of access, at least from the Worcester side. Some of our early triumphs, we were really formed um, in, res in a large way in response to Mechanics Hall, and I don't know how many, I hope all of you have been there, but there was a move to demolish it, and that w was one of our huge impetuses. Also, uh, we worked hard on the Crown Hill neighborhood, which has a, it's a large enclave of Greek revival buildings. Um, and the bottom right, we, um, we struggled to, they were go, the city wanted to demolish an old school and a Carnegie library. We, it was very contentious but before my time, um, but they ended up combining the library and the school with a new structure and it became an award-winning school. We talked a little bit about Union Station. This is a church we relocated in Quinsigaman Village that was going to be demolished. And um, now we're starting into my tenure at Preservation Worcester. The first day I started work, the demolition delay ordinance came off. Um, the Chestnut Street Church, and I spent a summer trying to keep that church up. We eventually brokered a deal um, and got some contributions, and now it, it's functioning at a, as a church, which is wonderful because churches are challenging, and if you can find a church and get a new congregation in there, that's the best. Uh, the building on the right is the Kimball Building, um, somebody wanted to demolish that and put in a surface parking lot to, um, to help the, his, he had bought a building across the street. We showed up en masse to the uh, Historical Commission meeting. It was, this was on the front page of the Worcester paper. The next day somebody called me and said that she wanted to buy it. And we were able to work with the owner who, I couldn't believe it, but when I met him at the building, he said he'd never been in it. And <laughs> it was so beautiful inside. And uh, so that worked out really well. He was happy. He got a little bit of the parking lot behind for his, his business. Uh, the GAR Hall on the left mm -hmm. is one we worked on. Uh, and part of our mission is not just buildings, but it's structures. and. One of, uh, one of our most fun projects was um, restoring this clock. We got, uh, got $10,000 worth of donations to restore this clock, which is adjacent to the common in downtown Worcester. 
I don't know if you remember the old Worcester State Hospital, but um, we really tried to see if part of the old campus could be reutilized for the new uh, psychiatric hospital that was going in there. And um, it was decided that that was not possible. And then we wanted to keep the administration building, which this tower was part of, and that didn't work out. So we said, well, how about if we keep the tower part? And we worked with the state. And so that's still standing. It's a great beacon. You can see it from Route 9. You can see it from 290. Uh, Worcester has a great history in the treatment of uh, psychiatric illness. And so this stands as a symbol to that. We also saved Our Lady of Fatima Church, which is now owned by the Chinese Gospel Church, the uh, Palladium, which is in downtown Worcester. Uh, this Quinsigamon Fire Station was recently bought by one of our board members who's restoring that. Uh, the central building on Main Street, they also wanted to demolish that. That's now being converted into uh, retail on the street level and apartments up above. I don't know if any of you read, but we, um, you, you did. <laughs> uh, when the, um, pardon? They made leave town. They did. Yeah. When the, uh, part of the agreement we had with the um, Chestnut Street Church was, it was going to cost a million dollars uh, to fix the tower towers and where the gargoyles were. And we had an agreement that um, the towers could be lowered six feet. The, the gargoyles were supposed to be stored in the basement of the church. When the church went to sell to another congregation, I went over and asked to see the gargoyles. And then I found out that the gargoyles were not there. And they had been the restoration man who t had taken down the, t the towers and had boxed all the stones and numbered them so they could eventually go back up. He, his business had been foreclosed on and a bank had sold these. Uh, and so I was getting calls from all over the place. The gargoyles are here, the gargoyles are, are there. Uh, the BBC called me, the Canadian broadcast system. It got picked up by UPS. Um, it turned out that they were in Springfield, and, and we, I went up with the pastor of the church to speak to the man who had them. He said that he really liked them, and although the bank was willing to give him twice as much as he paid for them, he didn't want to sell them back. And so we had the right, the church gave us the rights to the gargoyles, and we sued the man, and he brought them back and <laughs> and so we have them and we're we don't know that they'll ever go back up on the church but we're looking for a place to relocate them and really felt that they were part of the city and belonged there one of our i don't know if you're familiar with this building this is the uh, fire alarm and telegraph building which was is located on park avenue in worcester had been vacant for 25, 30 years. There were trees growing out of the back. It was just a disaster. And uh, we worked in a public-private partnership with the city of Worcester and Spencer Bank, which is now Cornerstone Bank, on the restoration of the building. And because it's located in a uh, public park, the there really needed to be, it's part of Elm Park. Elm Park goes across the street. There needed to be, there needed to be some kind of public use for it. And so the bottom floor is a, what we call the park view room. And it's a room that we own and we use for our events as well as we rent it out. And then the bank has their branch on the second floor. It won a Silver Hammer Award for the, from the Chamber of Commerce, and last year won a Preservation Award from the Mass Historical Commission. And um, this is a great project that we're working on right now. The Stearns Tavern was one of two remaining taverns in the city, 
and the owner wanted to demolish it. He couldn't rent it out, and he just didn't want to pay the taxes on it anymore. But he told us that if we found someone to move it, that uh, we could have it. And so we are the current owners of the building, and we worked with the city of Worcester and with um, Seven Hills Foundation and relocated it, cut it in half, moved it about a quarter of a mile. This is what it looks like today. We're still working on it. Um, but we've, we've had over, I think it's 96 different partners on this program. We've raised almost $2 million for it. And um, we're still working on it. We hope to have a ribbon cutting this spring, but it's a, it's a really great product project and um, there's going to be a really great use for it as well. And this is a project, if you're familiar, the Boys Club in Lincoln Square. Um, this is another project of ours. We're in a limited partnership with Wind Development on this and uh, we've been the applicant for historic tax credits for them. We've raised over $2, two million dollars of tax credits toward this project. The city in March is supposed to be selling this building to wind development and it is going to be um, used by Summit Academy, which um, works with high functioning people with autism. So it's another really nice project. But I think what you, you'll be most interested in maybe is um, some of the tools we use that might be applicable in Shrewsbury. We've had a Most Endangered Structures program since 1995, and each year we have, we have a committee. We, we divide the city up by zip code, um, and people, they walk through their, or drive through their zip code area, look for buildings that are stress, distressed, also look for buildings where something positive has happened, and we come up with our most endangered structures list. Uh, we publicize it widely. People don't always like to be, have their building in the paper as a negligent uh, building owner, but it's been, it's been really successful for us. Uh, we also in Worcester have a demolition delay ordinance, and the times I've come to talk to Henry Wood, that was the topic of our conversation, but that in Worcester, if there's a historic building, uh, there's a one-year waiting period where you can't demolish the building, and you are supposed to work with groups like Preservation Worcester to find an alternative to demolition. And each of these three buildings up here and many others are standing because of that demolition delay ordinance. Otherwise, uh, the owners would have gladly just demolish them. <clears throat> we also have three local historic districts in Worcester. We're looking to establish more, and I know you have a district here that's similar that um, is, is guarded more, more intensely than other areas in the city. We hold preservation restrictions on a lot of properties. Uh, there are ho there are homeowners and building owners that want to uh, protect their properties in perpetuity. This is the, the most recently we took a restriction on this building, which is off of Graft Grafton Street in Worcester. There aren't a lot of barns in Worcester, so we hold a restriction on the interior and exterior of the barn, on the exterior of the house and on the stone walls of that property. So even if the building is sold, these restrictions pass on uh, to the next owner. We, um, I thought this would be interesting to you, but there was a building in Northboro. Uh, they, the Northboro Historical Commission was not interested in holding a restriction, but we said that we would take the restriction on this property, so that's the Chesbro House in Northboro. We have a restriction on that property as well. 
I mentioned briefly historic tax credits, but for an income producing property, um, a lot of times uh, restoration of a property is more expensive than um, new construction. So the historic tax credits are a great tool to help um, bridge the gap financially in a big project. Um, and if the building is on the National Register of Historic Places, it's automatically um, will get the 20% historic tax credits. Uh, in the state of Massachusetts, you can get up to 20%, but it's a it's a longer process where you have to keep reapplying and reapplying. But you can get up to 40% of tax credits on the property that you can either use or sell. So it's a great, great tool, especially for a big project but it does have to be income producing. We also have a revolving loan fund where we give loans to people <clears throat> who wanna do work on their house, houses or their buildings. It's for facade work only and it's up to $25,000. That pink house right there, we gave them a loan of, to paint their house. We have a a historic marker program. Those were the first recipients of our marker, but it's a great way, and I think you have some markers in the city, but it just draws people's attention to the fact that, okay, this is an important place. Uh, every year we work with the Nativity School of Worcester, um, and during Preservation Month we go out and with the kids, they make their signs. We stand in front of a building that needs to be restored, and then we stand in front of a success story. It gets a lot of publicity, and um, it's, a, it's a fun project, especially um, working with these kids that are so excited to be out with their signs. Uh, in May, we typically ha celebrate Jane Jacobs. I don't know who, if you know who she is, but she was um, an urban activist and, and do walks. Last year we had um, over 40 different walks through the city during, a week, during what we call Jane Week. But again, <clears throat> education is key because sometimes people just don't understand why preservation is important. We try and <clears throat> we, we have to fundraise every year. We try and have our fundraising ex events connected to our mission. Um, the top left it was the, what we called the oddball. We had it in the old Memorial Auditorium. <clears throat> Excuse me, that was highly successful. We annually have a house tour typically during the holidays, the holiday stroll, which is the upper right. Um, the, the bottom left is what we called the Ichabod Ball, which we did at the old Northworks building. And um, on the right is an art exhibit we had at the Sprinkler Factory, which is an old factory. Um, and the exhibit was called Favorite Places. And we had a photographer, the, the woman there was the photographer that we chose to take pictures of different activists in Worcester in front of their favorite building. Somebody told me they, they saw this, but we, last week we gave out preservation awards with the Worcester Historical Commission. And, <laughs> excuse me, we actually had a huge crowd. We had almost 100 people come to them, which we were surprised. This was the first time we tried this, but um, these were our awardees. We, the Foise Innovation Center was for new construction and that's on the WPI campus. Um, <clears throat> this Duncan Goodell building is really interesting. Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has, has bought a lot of buildings in downtown Worcester, and the building adjacent to it, they had bought the New England School of Acupuncture and wanted to they wanted to demolish that building and put in a, another surface parking lot. And it's one of the few intact blocks in downtown Worcester. And um, we worked with the um, city manager and the chief economic development officer, 
And what they eventually did was they put a garage under the building. So they got their um, parking and then they restored the building and have it for program use. Um, the middle bottom um, is interesting because we also congratulated someone for painting that mural. And some of you may recall that Santi Graziani was an mm -hmm. artist in Worcester. This is actually a mural he painted for um, Worcester during the bicentennial. And the man that owned the building, um, he said at that meeting, um, Alex Graziani, who mm -hmm. I remember, they got in touch with her. She lives in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. They were trying to figure out the, uh, oh no, I, I don't know where she lives, but she was trying to help them determine the original colors. They brought someone in from Brooklyn who actually did testing so that they could find out what the colors were and uh, he repainted it. Um, the Stanley Kunitz house up above, uh, Stanley Kunitz was a poet laureate um, and the, a woman and her husband since 1979 have been working on this home. And then the Oaks on Lincoln Street. So they, they all got awards. Um, we are working in Worcester to try and pass the Community Preservation Act, which is also something that I know has been uh, discussed in Shrewsbury as well. And that is a um, small surcharge on a residential uh, on your re, um, residential tax, and it goes toward historic preservation, green space, and um, affordable housing. And the the um, money that you raise from your local tax base is um, it's matched, or it's not an. It used to be matched 100%. Now it's about 20% by the state. So. Um, you get money from the state as well as from the um, the money you raise. And the building, the towns and cities in green are the ones that all participate in it. And the white ones in Central Mass is definitely not a participant, are the ones that um, haven't participated, haven't passed it. We... Um, tried to get the city council to put it on the ballot last year. They declined, but our group of us are still working to get it passed in, in Worcester. Um, the other thing that I think is really important to think about as you work um, and want to preserve buildings are partnerships. Um, I don't think anything that we've done um, at least any of these projects would have been possible for us without having a lot of partners. So don't work in a vacuum. Uh, try and get other people involved with you as well. Um, just in closing, I thought I'd tell you what we're trying to do this year, what's on our agenda. Uh, we really want to make sure that we identify the landmark properties in Worcester Right now, with the um, Red Sox coming to Worcester, there there's a lot of activity. Buildings are being picked up. Um, the city manager was telling me, we, nobody ever used to call us. Now they're calling. They want buildings. And we want to make sure that our historic buildings are, are saved. Um, there's something called the Macris List. Um, and you probably aren't familiar with it, but architect it's, it involves an architectural survey of buildings. We want to get more buildings surveyed. Um, I would also like to see a minimum maintenance law passed in the city. A lot of cities and towns do that where they require a certain standard of maintenance. Um, advocate for the approval of plans prior to the demolition of historic structures. One thing that really bothered us when we worked on the Notre Dame church was that they've demolished that building and it's just an empty space. And we think if you're going to take down a building, you should have some uh, an approved plan for, for that space. Um, we'd also like to see for sale signs on properties that are under our demolition delay. Um, one year delay. 
Um, we're going to work to establish some more historic, local historic districts like the district you have here because that's the biggest protection. Um, we're working on the CPA, as I said. We'd also mm -hmm. like to have the establishment of a design review panel in, in the city. I'm not sure uh, for new construction here if there are any requirements for in terms of design, but we'd like to see that. Um, we uh, we did do our preservation awards, so that's done. And um, we're also working with the city on a new preservation plan for the city. So as I said, we try and save the best to last. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody might have. So the house that you said the man wanted to put a parking lot and had never been in there? Pardon? The house? Oh, yes, yeah. Where is that? That's on Lincoln Street. It's near Hanneman Hospital. Yeah. It's right across the street. Mm. I never really noticed it. It's a yeah, building. it is. And um, it's a shingle style. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the architect, Queenia. but he's, he's, pardon? Queenia. Yeah, and he's, um, and it just astonished me that you would buy a building and tear it down without even going into it. Yes. Is there a place where they have fire station right there? It's still there, and it has never been changed? Where's that? Eastern Avenue. Eastern Avenue. Mm -hmm. Very close to Belmont Street. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people are living in it. They're, they've been living it for like 40 years. Yeah, there's also, there's a fire station on Plantation Street. And somebody, this uh, this man, uh, Paul Kirchy, recently I, bought I, it. I lived there about 15, 20 years. Oh, you did? Yeah. And, uh, during World War II, uh, the, the fire station was mm -hmm. there as well. And, and this man is, and his wife are making into it into a residence as well. But there's no uh, anything to do with it? <clears throat> Pardon? Is there going to be any, any change on that ever? Uh, on what? On that fire station. The one on Eastern uh, Ave? Yeah. I don't know. It, it's never been changed. It's it just like a station. That's great. I don't know. I've never been in there. <clears throat> Yes. Where's Stern's Tavern? Stern's Tavern was located on uh, Park Ave. And the interesting thing, it had already been moved once. It was originally on Main Street. It was moved um, by, it was Home Federal Savings Bank over to Park Ave. Is it in Yale Park? Uh, no, it's, um, it's down near Webster Square. Oh, the town. Yeah, and now it's over on Coase Pond. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and the interesting thing with that is that the city had put in a, a multi-generational, universally accessible park and playground, which um, mm -hmm. is geared, there aren't very many in the state, but it's for people of all abilities. So if you're in a, a wheelchair or if you're blind, you can participate in that. And um, so Seven Hills Foundation, which, um, works with persons with disabilities are going to run programs out of the tavern once it's done. So there's going to be a cafe in there. You're going to be, it's going to be a workforce training site for these people with disabilities. They'll maintain the park and the playground as well. And I think I forgot to mention, we're not going to keep ownership um, in the near future. We'll give it to the city and it will be a city building um, with, uh, Seven Hills as our tenant and um, that was I guess another thing I forgot to mention but it's really important you don't want to just save buildings to save them they need to have some kind of new use in life it's really important yes what's the um, working relationship between Preservation Worcester and the Historical Commission so um, the Historical Commission is a commission that is appointed by the city manager, and we work really well with them. Um, we will, we see that they meet every other week. They have long agendas. We go um, when we have an opinion of things. But then they also use us because they can't, um, 
for instance, give the name of a carpenter or they can't suggest certain things and they're, they don't have the capacity to actually work with someone, so then they will pass the person on to us and we will help, help them out. But um, we're fortunate because we have a very good re working relationship with them and also with the city. Yes? Anything new on the uh, Worcester World War I mem Memorial Auditorium? Yes, okay. So um, I, if you don't know, there are three major buildings in Lincoln Square, the former courthouse, the boys club and the auditorium. And it was always the thought that let's get one done, then the next, then the next. And the auditorium is the most challenging, but the architectural heritage, the city owns it and commissioned the Architectural Heritage Foundation, which is a group out of, it's a nonprofit out of Boston. And they're looking at plans for how it can be repurposed. It's a challenging place, but since Something positive is going on with the Boys Club and the auditorium. We're hoping that will spur something with, uh, I mean, with the courthouse, with the auditorium. One of the colleges had an interest. Right, at is Becker that, College. Becker College. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. The front part with the World War I mural uh, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and all is absolutely right. gorgeous if anybody hasn't been in there. Right. It's still, it's still all in great condition. It is. It is. We had our oddball there, and that, I think, triggered a lot of interest in it. And we've, we've opened it up periodically. One summer there were 5,000 people because, you know, people have memories. They have memories of graduation, or they went to their first concert there, or they uh, danced in a ballet group on the stage. It really holds a lot of memories. Anything else? Still works. What? The organ still works. I, and it's uh, and it hasn't. Yes. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been tampered with either, which is, yes, which is re really important. Important that um, that's what makes it so valuable because most of them have been tampered with. You had done your organization had done a, a, a wonderful opening of of the auditorium and tour uh, a few years ago, right. and, uh -huh. and it was really worth. Anybody who uh, there was there was nobody who was uh, sorry that they that they went and it, right. I, I found it fabulous. Took a lot Good. of pictures, um, and, and you've done a number of others. I'd be anxious to see what you have planned uh, for the future for similar tours. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you can follow us uh, on Facebook. You could also go to our website. Because um, we do list our events, you, I do have our um, December newsletter. I have some events here. I have a membership brochure and also some information on our Park View room. But yep, yeah, go to our. We'd love to have as many people as possible, and uh, you're definitely welcome to come to our events. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you.